Senior Connections, a show about senior issues and events. A guide to active, independent living. Senior Connections, with your hosts, Margie Toms and Janet Halliday. Good afternoon and welcome to Senior Connections. I'm Margie Wimberly Toms. And I'm Janet Halliday. Are you, would you like to work with children or have you ever thought about being a mentor for a child? Today we're going to be discussing mm. the Foster Grandparent Program with Rachel Haddon. She's the director. So listen up and take some notes and you can find out how you can make a difference in a child's life. Welcome to the show, yes, Rachel. Thank you for Welcome, having me. Rachel. Thanks. Why don't we start with, why don't you tell us what the foster grandparent is all about. Okay. I had seen it in the newspaper and I said, oh, this sounds so exciting, particularly for our programs. So you go right ahead. Okay. Rachel. The Foster Grandparent Program is a program that actually started in uh, 1965 under the Older Americans Act. And um, it um, places seniors, low income seniors, in schools, nursing uh, care facilities, and um, mm -hmm. hospitals to work with children who have special and exceptional needs. Um, so it's an intergenerational program so that children can benefit from the wisdom and guidance of elders while still getting um, their needs met so that they can progress um, and become good citizens. So now, is there an application process that the that folks have to go through to become a, a foster grandparent? There uh -huh. is. Um, uh -huh. They do have to fill out an application and submit it, um, and they have to um, submit proof of their income because they do have to be under 200 percent of the federal poverty guidelines, um, oh. and they also um, need to be age 55 or older. Uh -huh. And um, for our program, they need to live in Richland, Lexington um, counties. Now, um, you said. Okay, so this is just for low income seniors, so it would exclude anybody else? Well, I don't like to say that we exclude anybody mm -hmm. else. Um, there are programs across the country, because we are in every every state. Um, um, mm -hmm. There are other programs that allow um, people who are over income to participate. Um, we don't. Um, what we do is we refer them to um, the RSVP program, which is Retired mm -hmm. Senior Volunteer Program. And um, it's also at Senior Resources, and they can um, mentor children through that program. Sure. Oh. How long have you been in existence here in Columbia? Um, I believe that we started in Columbia in 1967 um, through the Midland Center. And then um, we've had the um, contract since I believe 83. So um, it's been with Senior Resources for oh. you know over uh -huh. 20 years. Uh -huh. So in the application process, tell us what that uh, is like. Okay, um, they just, I need to know their name, their, their contact information, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. They tell me about any um, civic organizations they participate in, any previous volunteer experience. I have to provide two personal references. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, after they go through training, they have to um, do a SLED background check and a National Sex Offender Registry check. Um, we also have to have a pre-service physical just to, to verify that they're well enough to serve at no danger yes. to themselves or the children. And um, I do an interview with each of them in their homes. So I, I go to their homes, I look at all their pictures of the grandkids, I talk to them about you know what they do and why they're interested in being a foster grandparent just to make sure it's a good mm -hmm. match because it is, um, it is a big time um, it's a big time commitment um, sure, and, and you sure. do have to have the personality and the willingness to work with with children who have um, special needs so do you have a cadre of volunteers I do we do? Um, we actually had a hundred volunteers last year um, right now we have um, 87 and we brought on a group of um, eight more and mm -hmm. we do have a few openings left I believe so if um, if people apply, then I'll, I'll look and see if we'll have enough space for them in the program. Yes. Um, because it's tricky because we're given um, a certain amount of hours to serve in a year and have to split mm -hmm. that among all mm -hmm. the volunteers. So what's the minimum number of hours that they're required yeah. to serve? Um, 20 hours a week is the minimum and 40 yeah. hours a week is the maximum. Right. Um, but we, we keep all of our volunteers at about 20 hours a week. 
Do you have all sorts of disabilities with the children? Um, we do. Um, we have a lot of special needs that we serve. Um, it could be um, anything from um, medical medical conditions, mm -hmm. learning disabilities. Okay. But it could also be things as simple as well, not simple, but things like um, problems at home, um, reading behind grade level, uh, um, having uh, behavioral uh, issues uh, in the classroom. So the foster grandparents help with all sorts of needs of the children, just to make sure that that the classroom environment um, sort of stays stays in uh, a good learning environment so that mm -hmm. the, the children mm -hmm. can thrive. Mm -hmm. Now, how do the children or, or that the agencies then send those uh, applicants, I guess, to you? I mean, do you get like 100, 200 applicants? How do, you, how do they match or find you? You mean the, as far as the children we serve? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we have um, 30 volunteer stations um, in the community, which um, most of them are schools, elementary schools. And um, we have liaisons at each school, and they um, work with placing the volunteers in, in certain classrooms that need assistance. Mm -hmm. And then um, the teacher will assign the foster grandparent um, specific children to work with. And we're going to take uh, our first break, but if yes. you're looking for a home care agency or they have medical equipment that would help you stay at home for a longer period of time, please give Comfort Keepers a call and they'd be happy to speak with you. Senior Connections brought to you by our premier senior providers, offering exceptional services for older adults. Our premier senior providers include Comfort Keepers of Columbia, Comforting Solutions for In-Home Care. Anesthesiology Consultants, board certified anesthesiologists with over 400 years of combined anesthesia experience, serving these fine institutions throughout the Midlands for over 25 years. Cornegie and Mosley Funeral Home and Cremation Services, our family serving your family since 1884. Hall Tax and Planning, helping you work towards a worry-free retirement. Welcome back to Senior Connections. We have our guest, Rachel, Rachel Hatton, who's talking about the Foster Grandparent Program. It's very interesting. I know you seniors out there are going to enjoy it. Now, Rachel, what I wanted to ask you, the number of children that are, are in the program. Okay. Well, um, last year, last fiscal year, we served over 700 children. And um, 600, over 600 That's of those were actually in elementary schools. Oh. Now, you had said earlier that they do a minimum of 20 hours mm -hmm. a week. So, do they sign up for like six months, a year? What is the time commitment there? Well, once they come on, they're, they're volunteers with us. And we've had some volunteers yeah. who've volunteered for over 20 years. Oh, so, um, it's, it's a wonderful program. And um, once they get in, they, they like to stay. So, mm -hmm. we try to keep them happy and, and do things to support them um, to make sure that their needs are met as volunteers because we want it to be an enriching experience for them as well as for yes. the children. So, this is held in the public schools? Mm -hmm. All right, so the volunteers go there. Yes, ma'am. Is that how it works? Mm -hmm. And the teachers have a planned curriculum. Uh, any uh, playtime involved in that with the uh, grandparents being there to help yeah, they them? Yeah, can, they can help play with them and things like that too, but most of uh -huh. what they do is um, sort of tutoring and mentoring. Mm -hmm. So you had said earlier too that they have to go through uh, orientation mm -hmm. or training. Uh, tell us a little bit about the orientation. Okay. Um, they're required to have 40 hours of pre-service training and what that consists of is 20 mm -hmm. hours with us which we do over the course of a week and then they do another week of training um, with the school once they start and then we have monthly in-service trainings that are four hours each and we have speakers come oh in and talk to them about um, different things that could benefit them or benefit the children that they serve. And you the class size, excuse me Jan, yeah. the class size what the class size of the trainings that we do? No, of the children. Oh, uh, that I don't know. It would be oh, yeah. whatever's in the schools. Oh, okay, okay. So there's one volunteer to a class. Yes, ma'am. I mm -hmm. see. 
Oh, I th I guess I, I was under the impression that it was like more one on one. It is one on one, but okay. they they're actually assigned to a classroom, yes. and then they they work in that classroom with specific kids in that classroom. Now, do you have anyone who ever goes like into the hospitals to the children's mm -hmm. hospital? We do have one volunteer right now who's working mm -hmm. at the hospital. She works at the um, children's um, the children's hospital in the blood disorders unit. Yes. Yes. That must be very good for the children to be able to relate to a grandparent because mm -hmm. some of them may not have grandparents, mm -hmm. you know, and it must be a bonding there that goes on also it definitely that is. would help, you know, in mm -hmm. terms of whatever disease or disability they may have, you and know. One of the, one of the teachers uh, last year said that the foster grandparents really changed the whole environment of the school to make it a more nurturing and loving environment. And I think that's yes. a really special thing that, that seniors especially are able to tap into. Absolutely. Um, you know, many of them have their own grandchildren, their own children. They've sort of been, become the mothers of the community and, and the volunteers that we place in the schools live around the schools so many of them already know the children that they're working with. Oh. So it's really a special thing that someone from the community who's who's helping mentor there. Sure, sure, sure. So can they choose what what school they would like to participate in with? In some instances, yes, but we do try mm -hmm. to place them within five to ten miles of where they live. All right, that makes now sense. Now you were saying that this was for low income. Mm -hmm. Do they get compensated uh, for their time? They do. Um, they receive a small oh, stipend okay. for their service, which is two dollars and sixty-five cents an hour mm -hmm. and twenty-five cents a mile for mileage reimbursement. And the the purpose of, of giving them a stipend is to avoid them having any direct cost for service. Because I know that y'all have probably volunteered. I know I have. It, it does yes. take it does take some money to get there and to yes. Mm -hmm. So you know mm -hmm. we we want to make sure that they're not incurring any cost to serve. Now so. is this tax free? It is, okay. and it doesn't count against any other yeah. benefits that they receive. Okay, which is good. Oh my gracious. Um. And you said, how many slots do you have available right now? I don't know for certain, but the thing is, if they want to apply, I can hold their application. Mm -hmm. And um, when we do, we, we generally bring volunteers on at two points during the year, um, in July and then again in September, um, so that they'll be able to serve the majority of the school year. And you had said earlier that they need a, a medical certificate. Um, well, what they what they do is once they come through training, I give them the um, the form that they need, and they can go to either their physician or we have a center that we send them to to have their physical completed. Now, who pays for that? We pay for that. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so, so that's yeah, covered. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Again, no cost to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then while they're in the the classroom mm -hmm. or at the school. Uh, what about the liability? Are they how are they covered? They're covered through us through um, SEMA insurance. Mm -hmm. um, it is a mm -hmm. supplemental policy, um, but they're um, they they do have excess auto liability and um, volunteer liability while they're volunteering with us. Okay, so if one wanted to join your organization, I know some information will probably be uh, on our station, but. Where else could they find that? Uh, um, they can go to our website. Um, they can uh -huh. go to nationalservice.gov um, and find out more information about the foster grandparent program there. Or they can go to seniorresourcesinc.org um, to our website. Or they can just call me. So. Okay. Thank you for being Thank with you us so today. Much. It's been my that was very Thank interesting. And stay right there because you're going to meet two foster grandparents when we come back. <laughs> Today we're going to discuss canes. Sometimes as we age and our frailty kicks in, it is harder to keep our balance. One of the biggest things that elderly um, loved ones have a problem with is falling. And to prevent that, you may want to consider a cane as an option. Canes come in a variety of different styles and makeups. They also have wooden as well as aluminum type canes. I would suggest an adjustable cane for most people. Wooden canes are set at a certain height, and so you'd have a hard time maybe finding one that would work with your typical height. But an adjustable cane works with you. An adjustable cane such as this allows you to set the cane at a specific height, and it's very important that you do so, because sometimes people have canes that are way too high for them or very low. One of the things you don't want to have happen is you don't want to have a cane that puts you down lower to create this bending over effect. With women in osteoporosis, that's something you do not want to encourage. So you want a cane that's going to allow you to stay upright and be at a 45 degree angle. An adjustable cane can allow you to have that flexibility because it can adjust to the height that is necessary. 
When you adjust it, you screw it back in, and then you allow it to come to about a 45 degree angle from your hip, and that gives you the best stability. Also, you want to use the cane that's on the side that's the strongest. A lot of people use it on the weaker side. That's to prop them up. However, the stronger side is also preferable because your body's already cheating and going to that specific side, and you're giving an extra stability when you do that. So you probably want to use it on that side. You may want to talk with your physician about the best choice for you in ambulation products. Now, canes come in a variety of different styles and makeups. You have soft handle canes, you have hard handle canes, all of these are adjustable. Then you have what you call the palm grip cane. This allows a person, say for instance, who also has arthritis, to have a little bit better grip on the cane to hold it. But you can get canes if you have arthritis that have soft foam that are helpful to holding as well. And of course, remember the little straps are really, really great for when you want to keep up with your cane. Quad canes are different. Quad canes are a little bit more stronger for a person who has to have a four-pronged type of stability. Now the four prong cane allows you to have stronger support, especially if you've had a knee injury or an ankle injury. They come in small as well as large base for people 350 pounds or more. You can get them as soft handled as well as um, the crook handled as well. But you want to adjust those to your height. Uh, remember, 45 degree angle from the hip. I'm Sean Owen, and for a large variety of canes, see me at MedPoint's Medical Specialties, 728-0122. How have these homeowners achieved greater financial flexibility? With a reverse mortgage from a trusted source, MetLife Bank. If you're a homeowner age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage could make a difference in your life too. It is the best thing we've ever done. I am so, so relieved. It really lets me sleep at night. Why not learn the facts today from a MetLife Bank reverse mortgage consultant? There's no obligation. Welcome back to Senior Connections. We are continuing our program on the Foster Grandparent Program. Janet, why don't you introduce our two volunteers here? I will be happy to. We are joined now by Peggy Bethel and Emily Wright, and they're Hello. two foster grandparents that are serving yes. right now in the program. Welcome to the show. Welcome, Hello. ladies. Thanks for having us. Peggy, why don't you start? Tell us how long you've been in the, uh, uh, the grand, uh, Foster Parent Program. I've been in the foster grandparent program four years. This will be my fifth year. Uh-huh. And Miss Emily, how long have you been in? I'm starting my second year. Your oh, second right. year. Okay. And how did you learn about the program? Either one of you can answer. Well, I've known about it for a while. I had family uh -huh. in the program. I was still working and I decided then that I would either sub or mm -hmm. work with the foster grandparent when I retired. Uh, yes. I retired from the medical field. And Ms. Wright, I told her about it. Very good. And then she decided to go and inquire and fill out an application, and Rachel called her, and she enjoys it very much. When you say you had family in the program, was that someone who was also a foster grandparent? Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, ma'am. Okay, all right. What, what has been one of the most rewarding parts of being a foster grandparent? That, to <coughs> me, it's seeing when a child comes from below grade level on reading or math to mm -hmm. one to two maybe three grades above and when they hit that third grade level on reading i mean that smile that hits their face it's just like it's christmas for them they've just opened a whole box full of toys so. and you know they don't know which way to go now do you ladies work with the same children each day uh, yes. You do. do. So they yes. are familiar with you and right. you're familiar mm -hmm. with them. Yes. And so you can judge from where you started with them to where right. they have, what uh, right. level they've reached. Yes, ma'am. So, Miss Peggy, how many days a week are you in the classroom? Four days, four hours. Four and Miss Emily, how, how many days are you in the uh, classroom? Five days a week. Oh, five a days a week. Yeah. Oh, that, that is... That is over 20 hours. So you're, you're no, putting you work four hours a day, four five hours days a, day a week. Day. That's yeah, 20 yeah, hours. That's 20. Okay. 
Okay. Do you get some loving from the children? Always. And are they happy to see it. you? I bet Always. you each day when you come in. That is so rewarding too, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. You know, just to have the little arms around you and he can give you a little kiss, you know. That just, that just makes your day, I'm sure, right? It makes your day. And when they come up and say, Grandma, my birthday's coming oh. up. Oh. <laughs> that right. was just. Do they tell you little secrets sometimes oh, also? Yes. You know, they share mm -hmm. with you. We can't share those. <laughs> That's why they're called secrets. That's, yeah. that's right. right. About that. so, do you have a favorite age that you like to work with more than the others? I mean, what is the age range that you typically work with? I like the uh, six-year-olds, first grade. The six, six. First grade. Well, last yeah. year I worked with all age groups because I was with a teacher that went in the media center and she went all over. So mm -hmm. I was all grades but I would pull out from first grade mainly and work with those. So what was yes. the oldest child uh, that you worked with? oldest was seven and a half years old. Seven and a half. Okay. All right. Okay. These children stay in the program how long in the public school? You know, uh, they're uh, mostly, uh, they have uh, disabilities. Is that correct? Most of them? Not Am all I of correct them. Not all of them. No. 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 no not then I all misunderstood of them. Rachel, I guess. Very some few, of them. Some of them have disabilities, oh, okay. and All the right. teacher will normally ask you to take that group of kids to your desk and work with them one on one. All right, so they're, they're included in the same class in with this the class other with students, the regular, right? Yes. Oh, all right. So, with the ones that do have the dis disabilities, you're able to work with individually then, mm -hmm. right? With them. Yes. Mm -hmm. I see. What has been one of the biggest challenges that you have personally faced being a, a foster grandparent? Mm. Not listening. <laughs> the children sometimes they come in and they are really excited about what they've done the day before and they want mm -hmm. to tell you about that mm -hmm. and they don't want to get down to reading or doing their math. And you give them about 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes, and then you say, okay, it's time mm -hmm. now. We've covered yeah. all this. Let's get down to this because your teacher is ready for us when we come back. She wants to see your papers. Oh, that's great. And well, I, I'm getting that signal over there that it's uh, <laughs> break time. And if you are looking for an assisted living facility, there are three Brookdale senior livings available in the viewership or in the viewing area. Give one of them a call. They'll be happy to schedule a tour, and I think you'll find it Wonderful. Be back back. Senior Connections brought to you by our premier senior providers, offering exceptional services for older adults. Our premier senior providers include Senior Living Guide, serving the Midlands for more than a decade. Life Care Center of Columbia, doing whatever it takes and then some. Brookdale Senior Living, providing exceptional senior living for over 30 years. Aging Gracefully, a senior living consulting service. Welcome back to Senior Connections. We are continuing with our guests talking about the Foster Grandparent Program. Now I need to know, either lady, it doesn't matter, the, wh what is the highest grade that you ladies work with? What do the grades go up to? Or are there certain grades that, that you participate in? You understand what I'm saying? You I know, from first grade? First grade only for me. Okay. But the program oh. itself. Right. But other, other folks can do seventh or eighth grade? Or, yeah, or that's do, what does we the need program go out. up for, I for folks? I think that there help. may be. Um, our Normally the middle school. More middle, middle school, school, I think so. I'm not really sure on that, but it goes to the fifth grade in the elementary schools. Okay. And okay. Now, you had said that you, you came from a medical background. Yes. Did you work with children in, in your previous? Uh, uh, Employment? Well, I worked in uh, radiology, Radi with okay. Baptist That's radiologist. Right. I worked directly uh, with them as a radiologist assistant. Oh, okay. Okay. And yeah, Ms. Emily, did you, uh, what kind of background did you come from? I had just recently, uh, well, I, when I say completed, uh, I had been a private caregiver. Okay. And mm -hmm. my patient passed on. And I was at a loss and needed something to do. And Peggy here told me about the senior yeah, yeah, a foster yeah, yeah. So program. did you always have a desire to work with children? Is that really what prompted it? 
You have to have a love for children to be able to do this. Yeah, I would think so. I did because I planned to be a teacher and I got detoured and went to the medical field. Oh, that's all right. So, so you kind of went, went back to it. One, I went back to it. I said I would sub uh -huh, or work uh -huh. with the foster grandparent program because sure. I knew a little bit about it. Now, um, when, when you first came in the door and I met you today, I noticed your bright smocks. Um, I call them orange. I mm -hmm. guess they're red. So yeah. this is something that you all get? Yes, yes. ma'am. And yes. I can say you stand out so that, that when you go into a classroom, the children really recognize you yes. immediately. Um, yes. So the children are kind of fami familiar with foster grandparents, but if you come in with one of those on, they know automatically. They know you. Okay. Okay. And um, how, how about how many men do you have in this program? Do you know? Uh, two. Two? Possibly. Okay, gentlemen. We're going to issue you a challenge. They yes. need more men in this program. So for all of you men out there, <laughs> you can take some of that time off the golf course or out of the hobby shop. Give Rachel Haddon a call and sign up for this program. So, I, you know, we're going to keep track about how many men come on this program. Absolutely. They, they need Absolutely. To, That's for sure. To, uh, uh, go ahead. Something I wanted to ask. I don't know. Hearsay, uh, not having any grandchildren myself, but I hear some of my church members to, who are, are t in the teaching profession, mm -hmm. and they say how, how bad the children are today in classrooms. Are you finding that? Are you experiencing that? Or because you're there, you think that that's lowering that level of, of anxiety that these children seem to have? What is it, AHAD or something, yeah. you know? Are you, are you experiencing anything like that? Yeah. Well, I think it makes a difference by us being there. A lot yes. of them I don't like to call a child bad. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of them are just missing things. They need a little love and mm -hmm. attention. And I deal with yes, a lot of yes. them that's a little hard listening, and then when I talk to them at the end of the day, right. they run up and say, Grandma, are you coming okay. tomorrow? Yeah, the That's fact so that you're there is making a difference, a difference, which is kind of what I thought, you yes, know? It does. Oh, and I'm going to go back to my challenge about the men, because a lot of these children don't have exactly. male role models no, in their they lives. Don't. So they need those male figures yes. to yes. come in and do that, yes. right? Yes. All right. So, ladies, um, if you had to convince the audience, what would you say to somebody, come on and be a, a foster grandparent? <laughs> Any words of wisdom? <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell them it's fun. Yes. Um, rewarding. Rewarding. Sure it uh, is. It's a challenge each day. You never know what each day is going to bring mm -hmm. out of the child. Well, we're going to close out. Thank you for being with us today. We really Thank appreciate you. it. Yes. And for you out there, take a look at this program. It would be very rewarding. But before Absolutely. we close, I want to remind you that Hall Tax and Planning has this survivor's guide and a vital documents locator. They'll be happy to send that to you if you go on Senior Connections or go to the Hall uh, website. Also, please pick up your copy of Senior Living Guide. It has a full page ad of Senior Connections and all of our wonderful sponsors. So if you have need for their services, please give them a call because they're supporting you. Thank you for being with us today. Yes, and please be sure and join us next week and everyone be blessed. For more information on the topics discussed on today's show, to learn about upcoming senior events and support groups in the Midlands, or to submit a question, go to SeniorConnectionsSC.com. You can also call us at 803-739-4205. Senior Connections, brought to you by our premier senior providers, offering exceptional services for older adults. Our premier senior providers include Hall Tax and Planning, helping you work towards a worry-free retirement.